When it comes to securing food in an outdoor setting, what's most important is we understand the big overlying concepts. All the little things that come into play are gonna be different from scenario to scenario, to season to season. So as a survival instructor, it's so important that I teach you these big concepts. If you understand them, you got it down. Today we're gonna to look at the L7 trap trigger. This is a great trigger because it's easy to remember, it's very simple, it works great on land, and it also works great with any kind of fishing rig. And the best part of a trigger like this is that once you set it, you can walk away and you can do other things, because if you are in a true situation or you're in a long-term wilderness living type situation, you have so many other tasks you need to complete. So standing somewhere or waiting somewhere for game to come is just not a realistic scenario. So being able to set these things, leave and come back and check them is ideal. Now I always start with the seven part of the L7 trigger because this is normally what's gonna be a little bit easier for us to make and then we can dial in the L part to fit this appropriately. So to start out, what we need to do is we need to pick a stake. So think about this is, this is gonna be our anchor point. So as you can see, this is longer. This is over 12 inches. It's probably closer to 15 inches. And the reason for that is because we're gonna drive this down into the ground and there's going to be a lot of pressure pulling up on this. So it's like a tent peg. If we would make a really short little tent peg like this and try to hold our tarp in during windy conditions, it's gonna blow out. So this is the same thing. We wanna make it nice and long. We're gonna drive it far down into the ground. The next step is gonna be come towards the top of this and we're gonna cut a seven notch. So as you should know by now, if you're following my channel, seven notch, very easy. What we're going to do is we're gonna make a cut about halfway into our piece of wood. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut up to that notch. And that's gonna be our stop cut. It's also though gonna finish off our notch. So it's a very easy, quick, effective notch to cut. This shouldn't take you a lot of time to make. What you do wanna make sure though is it's nice and clean. So you can see how nice and clean that notch is. Super important during this process. Now the next portion of this trap trigger is the L portion. So that is going to lock into the portion that we just cut. So I always like to tell individuals when you're working with stuff like this, okay, we're gonna trim this down, but initially keep your piece of wood long. It's so much easier to handle and work with than a short little stubby piece that you're getting your knife close to your fingers. Just keep it long, cut it, and then trim it down. So to start this, I use the same seven notch. So I'm gonna roll my blade in about halfway, and then I'm going to cut up to that cut that I just made, okay? just like that. Now at this point we have our L and our seven and they should fit together just like that. Now, my philosophy around the triggers themselves, make your big bold cuts just like we just did. And then if you need to, go back in and make those very fine cuts and really dial this thing in. What we're looking for is this top piece to hook on that bottom piece and be able to hold in place. We can then of course trim up the face of this notch. We can do things to this notch just to make it fit better. And this is where the art of trapping comes into play. You have to make that decision on what you're trapping and how your setup is actually going to look, how you want to dial in that trigger. But if you just understand and you're making two seven notches and you're gonna flip them over and that's how it's gonna be set initially, you're golden, you got the tools. And then what I'll do is I'll take that top notch, so the L section of that, and I like to trim this thing down somewhere around the two inch mark, okay? That just proves to me, it just it seems like it works a little bit better, it sets off a little bit easier, there's less weight here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim this off, beaver chew this around, And now my top section is almost complete. The only thing that I'm gonna do to finish this off at this point is I'm gonna put two V notches on each side of this towards the top in this area. That's gonna help the rope or fishing line, whatever I have on here, catch a little bit better and it's not gonna slide off as easily. Okay. 
So the first thing, of course, is find your location where this is going to happen. In our case, we're just gonna use a sapling that's already in the ground. This is probably not gonna happen the majority of the time for you for the simple fact that just because a tree's growing here doesn't mean an animal's here, or if you're fishing in a good spot, doesn't mean there's gonna be a perfect tree. So we'll talk about that in later videos about the spring pole itself. But in our case, the spring pole is just a sapling that is just being bent over at this point. So when it's released, of course, it goes flying. So it's important you understand that because that's gonna really play into this. But what I'm gonna do first is I am going to take that sapling again. I'm gonna bend it over. Now this is after I already identified the location in which I want to set this thing. And I'm going to tie off some rope. I have some twine here. I'm gonna tie that off. Now I normally use a clove hitch when I do this, okay? It just, it's quick, it's easy, it's super effective, works really nice. You can still recover your line after the fact. I'm gonna put a little stop knot in the back here. So if it slips a little bit, we're still good. And then right there you could see, so I have that on my line, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is that now we need to take our L and the L7 trigger, and we're gonna have to attach this. Okay, so I normally give it about a foot. You can play around with this. There is no right and wrong. It's just, again, we're just learning the basic concept. All of this stuff you can play with. Longer spring pole, shorter spring pole, further out in, all these things. You gotta play with that, okay? But about a foot down, we're gonna go in here, okay? And I'm gonna tie another clove hitch. So at this point, my line, which is important to also understand, I have a lot of it, okay? I didn't cut this. This is important with this because then you can adjust accordingly. But for now, I have this attached. Now, if I would take my stake itself right in this location, okay, this is going to hold that trigger in place, just like this, okay? See, that's held in place. So what would happen on this end is it would either go into the water that when a fish bites, it releases this and there it goes, it sets the hook, or this can run to a snare, this other rope. We can set a snare that when the animal hits it, it releases the trigger and it goes. I'm gonna show you that in action here in a little bit. But what we need to now do is we need to drive our stake in. So you can see at this point, I'm gonna say this is probably 10 or 15, even 20 pounds of pressure pulling up on that. So you need to have a long enough stake, super important with this. So you're gonna have to pull this down and guesstimate where you want it. This is all gonna play again into how far away that pole should be, how close it should be, everything else. Again, trigger, that's what we're focusing on. At this point now, I have my pole here, I have my trap trigger here, and I have my stake. I need to check with this trigger okay, where my stake needs to go in. So this is important because if I was trying to trap here or here or here, this is all gonna play a factor where it drives in. So with the trigger itself though, figure out where you need that trigger to lay and then take your stake and get it set there. Okay, so I'm gonna let this go up and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive this stake in. Okay, so my bottom trigger is in place. We're gonna bring the top portion of this in being very careful so it doesn't shoot back and hit us. And we're gonna see how this fits. If it doesn't fit too good, all right, we would have to readjust that. Now at this point, my trigger is engaged, spring pole is bent over. What we would have wanted to do, of course, prior to this is set our snare, which I have a loop right on the end of this line, wherever we would want that. Or if we were fishing, we would throw our line out and then set this. So what happens then with this trigger system itself? If the line is out and a fish bites and starts to pull, or if the animal, the rope animal comes through here, hits our snare, as it continues to walk, there it goes. You can see it back there dangling. It sets off that trigger, jolting it up into the air or setting that hook for us. We don't need to be there to do it. So literally two seven notches on some sticks, drive one in the ground, the other one gets tied off to a spring pole. And um, right there, you have yourself a trap mechanism that you can utilize on land or in the water.
Now, being a trapper myself, I cannot stress it enough. You need to just understand the concepts as a whole. If you understand that trigger, you can make a, a thousand adjustments to it. You can make little changes to it. And that's where your style is gonna show and that's where your ingenuity needs to come out because that, again, that is the art, the skill of trapping. And there you go, that is the L7 trap trigger. It's a great tool to know because it's so easy, it's so effective. Two seven notches, it gets the job done every single time. So this was Dan Wallach of Coal Cracker Bushcraft. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, check us out at coalcrackerbushcraft.com. And until the next video, stay in the woods.